Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about non competitive inhibition. So, what comes in your mind when you hear the term non competitive inhibition? In a layman's term, it's just not competitive, right? Now, we have earlier discussed the competitive inhibition paradigm where there is a substrate which is able to bind to the enzyme, but there is an inhibitor which is also able to bind to the uh, enzyme and both compete for the active site of the enzyme. Now, if the inhibitor occupies the active site of the enzyme, the reaction won't proceed and no product would be formed. So this is the competitive paradigm of inhibition. But what we can understand from a non-competitive inhibition name that this kind of paradigm is not followed there. So there is no confusion between that. Then what is non-competitive inhibition? In non-competitive inhibition, the inhibitor does not compete with the substrate for the active site. That means it doesn't care whether the substrate is bound to the active site or not. It further means that the inhibitor binds to a region which is different from the active site. It might be allosteric site as well. Now the inhibitor really don't care whether the substrate is bound or the enzyme is alone. Both the cases inhibitor, inhibitor is able to bind to the enzyme be it in an enzyme substrate complex or be it enzyme alone. And in each case, the reaction does not proceed and the reaction halts at that particular time. So this is the basic understanding of non-competitive inhibition, where the inhibitor don't compete with the substrate. Now, the special point about non-competitive inhibition and how it is different from mixed inhibition is the inhibitor has equal affinity for the enzyme in a lonely state or an enzyme in a substrate bound state. So both the situation inhibitor has equal affinity. This is very different from a mixed inhibition. But in order to understand how non-competitive inhibition is different from mixed inhibition or a special case of mi mixed inhibition, we need to understand the equation of mixed inhibition. Let's try to understand it mathematically first. So here is the equation pair equation showing that M enzyme plus substrate could form enzyme substrate complex which would give rise to product and enzyme alone now there could be the inhibitor binding in two regions either to the enzyme alone or to the enzyme substrate as well and it would form enzyme substrate inhibitor complex or enzyme inhibitor complex and these two reaction has two different rate constant for uh, which are like ki and ki dashed right now we can write the ki and ki dashed in this format and further convert it in terms of the concentration of enzyme substrate inhibitor and enzyme and inhibitor which we would be using in the later part of the derivation now total enzyme is a combination of only enzyme which is free enzyme and inhibitor complex or some there would be some amount of enzyme substrate complex as well where the inhibitor has not bound. Now there would be also enzyme substrate and inhibitor complex. So there would be four entity. Now if you try to write the expressions for all these four different entity, we would get something like this. Now we know this and this particular expression we have obtained previously uh, from the rate constants here. Now rearranging it into a little bit understandable form, we get a format like this. Now we have two alpha here, which is basically corresponding to two different rate constants. So each of the cases alpha is one by one plus uh, i by ki. Now if we take enzyme substrate as a common, we reach to this particular expression. And multiplying that both side to k2, we get v0 equal to vmax into s divided by alpha km plus alpha dash into substrate concentration provided v0 equal to k2es and vm equal to vmax equal to k2et now this is our equation for the mixed inhibition we have two factors alpha and alpha dashed now for non-competitive inhibition i repeat for non-competitive inhibition our ki and ki dashed are equal because the enzyme has equal affinity towards a substrate uh, towards the enzyme substrate complex and towards the individual enzyme 
So both these rest constants should be equal and alpha should be equal to alpha dashed, right? Now in that situation, if this is the equation for mixed inhibition, it would be reduced to V naught equal to V max into substrate concentration divided by Km plus substrate concentration into 1 by alpha, right? Because alpha dashed equal to alpha. Now we can clearly understand the Km hasn't changed, but Vmax has been reduced to a Vmax by alpha. So the, en the enzymatic reaction cannot reach its optimum Vmax, optimum reaction uh, velocity, right? So let's try to understand this same equation in terms of a graphical representation. But before that, the most important point that we need to understand that in case of mixed inhibition, these two rate constants are different. Ki is not equal to Ki dashed. But in case of non-competitive inhibition, Ki equal to Ki dash because enzyme because the inhibitor has same affinity towards the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. But in case of mixed inhibition, that's not the case. The inhibitor has different affinities towards the enzyme or it, if it is an enzyme and substrate complex. So that is an important point to keep in mind. Now let, let us look at how a Mi michaelis menten equation look like in a V versus S plot. We know it's like this, right? Now under circumstances of non-competitive inhibition, it the curve would look like this. Where clearly you can understand that Vmax has decreased to a degree of Vmax by alpha, but the Km has not really changed because the substrate the, the inhibitor does not give a damn whether it is bound to the substrate or the en enzyme is alone. So it has equal affinity towards the enzyme sub substrate complex and in the enzyme. So the Km is unaltered, but the Vmax has definitely reduced to V uh, to a factor of alpha, and that's why we can see there is a decrease in Vmax. Now, we can understand that the inhibitor does not discriminate whether the enzyme is substrate bound or sub not substrate bound. So let us take a look at the line weaver bark plot to understand the kinetic data better in this situation. So in non-competitive inhibition, the line weaver bark plot looks like this, where you can see the intercept in the y-axis is different. So the Vmax or the 1 by Vmax, which was the previous intercept, now becomes alpha or alpha dashed by Vmax. So it, the Vmax has reduced to a degree of alpha, right? But the Km, the intercept at the negative x-axis is the same, right? Because 1 by Km is the same point right now. From these two uh, plots, we can understand the, how the Km, Km and the Vmax are changing under a circumstance of non-competitive inhibition. Now let's take an example. We all know phosphoenol pyruvate, with the help of the enzyme pyruvate kinase, gets converted into pyruvate. And that's the last substrate level phosphorylation step in the glycolysis pathway, right? And in this particular step, ADP gets converted to ATP. Mistakenly, it is written as ADP. But anyway, it gets converted to ATP. Now, here, what happens is, the amino acid alanine works as a non-competitive inhibitor of pyruvate kinase and thereby it regulates the glycolytic flux. So we can understand by non-competitive inhibition glycolysis can be regulated. Now that that is the important physiological context of a non-competitive inhibition reaction. Not only that, several drugs which contains cyanide can block the complex 4 or cytochrome oxidase which is super important for the electron transport chain and this kind of inhibition is also a non-competitive inhibition which is super efficient in terms of uh, because it doesn't give a damn about whether the substrate is bound or not bound and it is pretty difficult right i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you